the decision bar. The sideways row of lights that is perpendicular to the approach light system is called the decision bar. The decision bar is located 1,000 feet from the runway threshold and all U.S. approach lighting systems have them. It serves several purposes. First, the decision bar creates a reference to the horizon that's useful when making a visual transition from instruments. While the threshold lights may be off in the distance, the decision bar is closer to the airplane. It acts to help keep your airplane's wings level when visually transitioning from your instruments to the runway environment during a low visibility landing. When the aircraft is on the glide slope at decision altitude, the decision bar will usually be seen slightly ahead of the cowling, then moving beneath the cowling. Now, this may at first appear contradictory. If the decision bar is located 1,000 feet from the threshold and decision altitude is generally located between one-half and three-quarters statute mile from the runway threshold, how can the decision bar appear to be going underneath the cowling? Well, the answer lies in your observation angle from the cockpit. While looking in a forward and downward angle from this height, based on the average arrangement of aircraft cowling, panel, and pilot sitting height, it will appear that the decision bar is just disappearing below the dashboard. Now keep in mind that this assumption is based on the construction of the average airplane and the average seating height and the pilot too. Your mileage may vary along with your neck length. Second, the position of the decision bar explains why sequenced flashing lights found on some approaches stop at the decision bar. These balls of light flashing twice per second could be a real distraction during the transition from decision altitude to touchdown. Fortunately, the sequenced flashers end at the decision bar. At decision altitude, these strobe lights disappear underneath the cowling and are no longer a distraction. Prior to decision altitude, the sequenced flashing lights help point you in the direction of the runway. Now this explains why some pilots ask controllers to turn off the flashers when they have spotted the runway prior to decision altitude. The professional jargon to use in asking the controller to turn off the sequenced flashers is kill the rabbit. Now, I had one gentleman in a seminar several years ago who thought it was actually kill the parrot. Well, kill the parrot means to turn off the transponder. You see, I had to inform this pilot that he was actually killing the wrong thing. He said, oh, maybe that's why they never turned it off. Well, he couldn't honestly say that no birds were harmed in the making of his approaches, though Easter was always a happy time given the abundance of rabbits in the neighborhood. Third, the decision bar is a valuable aid in helping pilots gauge in-flight visibility. If the aircraft is at decision altitude and the runway threshold cannot be seen, you should look for the decision bar. If decision altitude places you at 3,960 feet from the runway threshold, or three-quarters of a mile, and the decision bar can still be seen, then the visibility from the cockpit is 2,960 feet. If the approach minimum calls for one-half mile visibility, in other words, 2,640 feet, the minimum visibility requirement for landing is met. In a similar way, if your decision altitude places you at 2,640 feet or one-half mile from the threshold, and the decision bar is spotted but nothing is visible inside the decision bar, the estimated in-flight visibility is approximately 1,640 feet. Based on this estimate, the minimum required visibility of one-half mile or 2,640 feet would not be met. A word of caution here is appropriate. FAR 91175C subpart 2 specifically requires that to descend below decision altitude or the MDA, the flight visibility can't be less than that prescribed in the approach procedure being used. Another regulation in the same section, FAR 91175 subpart D, specifically states, 
that no pilot may land an airplane if the flight visibility is less than that specified in the procedure. Having the required visibility at decision altitude is no guarantee that it won't change as you approach the runway. You see, a lot can happen in the short distances from decision altitude to the runway threshold. For instance, if upon reaching the runway, the flight visibility has decreased below that required, then a missed approach must be made. Always be prepared for a change in visibility when approaching the runway. The most likely cause for such a change in visibility is variable cloud density near the touchdown zone. And this is one reason why you should pay special attention to varying runway visual range or RVR values. This usually indicates that the visibilities near the runway could be much different from those found at decision altitude. Hello folks, this is Rod Machado. I hope you've enjoyed this particular program and if you would like more information on these subjects, subjects that are not typically discussed in most IFR manuals or IFR courses, please consider purchasing my Rod Machado's Instrument Pilots Survival Manual, which is an advanced text for instrument pilots, or my Rod Machado's Instrument Pilots Handbook, which is a great text if you're preparing for your instrument rating or an IPC and or would just like more general information on the details of instrument flying.